All right, guys, I'm going to go over the part two, number 15, um, the graphing calculator one. All right, so let me type it in. This is to be the same calculator you have, 0 0.645. X, X is right here. X to the fourth power, caret, 4. And make sure you get out of the exponent. Minus 2.67. X squared, you can do caret 2, or you can use this button right here. It's going to be X squared, get out of the exponent again, plus 1.34. X, oops, and then minus 2.91. Okay, so as you can see, we have to sketch this graph on there as well. Um, a few things you can do, I always like to go to Zoom. And number six, zoom standard, that gives me negative 10, 10, negative 10, 10 window to see what it looks like. Um, good thing my graph comes in all of them. Um, if you look at the problem, it also says x goes from negative 3 to 3. So uh, it's personal preference. I'm going to go to window, window over here, and change my x spin as a negative 3 and x max as a 3 so that I only have negative 3 to 3 shown up for the x. You don't have to do this part. I'm just doing it because it makes sense, like, so I can zoom in more, okay? All right, letter A, the graph G has a zero at where? All right, look, you have zero over here, you have zero over here, so you have two zeros. For calculator, you have to do it two separate times to find where those zeros are at. You can't find both at the same time. So, second, calc, what are we doing? Zero, number two, or you can go down and hit enter, number two. Well, I'm going to try to focus on the zero on the left first. So it says left bound. Just like minimum and maximum, you're going to go to the left side of that zero. So that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. As long as it's the left of that zero. So I'm going to hit enter. Notice it starts a window. Now it says a right bound. So you're going to go to the right side of the zero somewhere over here. So move to the right. And you can, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. As long as you stay around it. There you go. So now you just told the calculator between these two values, find the zero. Last question, it says guess. I'm going to guess somewhere here in the middle, hit enter. So guess what? We just found the first zero. That is negative 2.40489. But AP Calc wants you to round, AP Pre-Calc rounds to round to the thousand. So one, two, three, that's your thousand. So you take the eight and then round it up. So I'm going to write negative 2.405. That's where I got that from. Does it make sense? All right. Now let's try to find the zeros on the right side. Second calc, number two zero. So now you're going to move all the way to the right. So you want the left bound. You want the left of the zero. So that's good enough for me. Hit enter. I'm going to go to the right end, right bound, right side of that. So I just gave the calculator window where to find it. Zero. There we go, that's my guess. Once again, you want to round to the thousand, so it's gonna be 2.049. Um, sometimes there's a little arrow here and there, and that's fine. Uh, it all depends on how your window has been set up. So if you wrote 2.050, it would have been correct as well. Okay. All right, now it says, on what interval is G increasing and decreasing and all that stuff? All right, easily you can see it's decreasing from here to here, this window right here, and decreasing from here to here. So you have two reasons that you have to find it. However, the problem is I don't know what this point is. I don't know what this point is. I don't know what this point is. So how are we going to do it? Unfortunately, you have to find this local minimum. This local maximum, this local minimum, all separately to find the x value and the use those x value for increasing and decreasing. There's no shortcut, so let's go. Second, trace. Let's do the minimum first. I'm going to do this one, this minimum. Okay, ready? So go to the left bound of that minimum right there, right bound of that minimum right there. Guess minimum looks right there. So my first local minimum to the far right is going to be 1.291. Are you writing it down? Because I can't write it down here. All right, next, second, calc. I'm going to try maximum this time, local maximum right here. So go to the left of that, max. 
somewhere there. Go to the right side of that max. Then guess. There we go. So local maximum at 0 0.259. Now let's find this relative minimum. Do you hear me keep going back and forth? The relative and local, they're the same thing. So left bound, left of that, right bound, guess, negative 1.551. So decreasing negative infinity, excuse me, I should not say negative infinity. I should say negative three. That's my <clears throat> x value starts at negative three. We cut it off, remember? So negative three till negative 1.551. And over here, 0 0.259 to 1.291. That's where it's decreasing. How many distinct real zeros? You just have to see where it passes the x-axis. One, two, two real zeros. How many the local minimum? Be careful because when you look at it, you're thinking that's a relative minimum, that's a relative maximum, that's a relative minimum. So I'm like, oh, three. However, folks, we start at negative three here. We end at three. So really, you do have to include those three endpoints because that's going to be the relative maximum. That's going to be the relative maximum as well. So in fact, this has one, two, three, four, five local extrema. Local extrema is a combination of local maximum and local minimum. Okay, hope that helps. If you didn't understand it, go back and keep watching.